Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator to create a splash screen um, for your Construct 2 game. I normally provide students with a what I call a vector kit, which helps them put together their splash screen in something like Inkscape. But a lot of my students um, have chosen to go down their own road as far as genre and style of game. So it's really important that you have a splash screen that works for your game that invites players in. So today I'm going to show you how to do this in Illustrator. Um, obviously I can help you with this. It can be a little tedious. But the whole idea here is that we need to use a tool that allows us to edit vectors rather than rasters. We want our splash screen and our um, final you win game over screen to be a very high quality. So I'm using an older version of Adobe Illustrator because it's expensive. And so this is CS6 um, Adobe Illustrator. Um, when you open up the program, what you're going to want to do is say File New. And you're going to create a new document. You want to make sure that your units is in pixels and that the width and height of your artboard is the same size as the window size of your game. So if you've been doing a um, HD landscape game, it's going to be 1920 by 1080 or something like that. If you've been doing a more old school vertical um, portrait style game, then it might be 960, 640, that kind of uh, 2 to 3 aspect ratio. So um, in, other, in, in any case, you're going to need something like this. You're going to want one artboard. Um, you're going to want a width and height that matches the uh, window size of your game, and then units is going to be pixels, and you press OK. So this is your artboard. You can think about it as your canvas. Before beginning this process, you're going to need some idea of what the splash screen needs to look like. And considering all of the things that you've placed in your game, you're going to want to collect the different um, vectors, rasters, and fonts that you used because we want the splash screen of our game to um, sort of preview the look and feel of the game that people are about to play. So in this particular um, example for this video, I'm going to show you how to create a splash screen for a like Viking Quest style game. And I have a font that I really like. I have different asset packs that were used throughout the creation of the game. And I'm going to use all of those when creating the splash screen. So it's really important that you use vectors whenever possible. And if for some reason you don't have a vector, you only have the rasters, never scale or try to size up a raster beyond its size because it will pixelate and it won't look good. Now, if you have a high quality PNG, um, feel free to use that in your splash screen. Just don't size it up. Now, just speaking for myself, Illustrator is one of the most uh, complicated, most intimidating tools just because there's so many darn menus and everything. One of the things you're going to want to do as you follow along is if you go to the window menu you'll see that these are all the things that you can have up. I like to have the layers menu up. Um, I like to have the stroke menu up. It also shows you the different shortcuts. Um, for example right now when you first create your artboard you're gonna have one layer and you're gonna want to use this in the same way that you're used to using layers in uh, Adobe Photoshop or in the Construct2 game engine. It, it's very similar. It's got the same visible and locking things, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I'm going to rename the first layer. Probably going to call this background. And then I'm going to think to myself, you know, what do I really want the background of my game to be? I probably want to start off with some sort of um, rectangle or something like that that I can put in the background. I'm going to make mine 1920 by 1080 and then just press OK. So there's my background. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to fill that background. I'm going to double click on the fill icon and then I'm going to choose some sort of color. I'm going to press this kind of like grayish and press OK. There we go. Um, you can always minus 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 plus 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 and that kind of thing when you're developing in here. At the very top of the screen you should see a lot of different like alignment options. We're going to go ahead and align our big rectangle so it fits perfectly over the uh, artboard. So there we go, that's going to be our background. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that. And I'm going to create a new layer by uh, clicking on Create New Layer. This one I'm going to make for my bricks. So I'm going to have these castle bricks that are in the um, above this uh, kind of brownish gray background. This is where my vectors come in. The things, the assets that I've used throughout the creation of my game. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to try to find what were the bricks? What were the background objects I used in my game? 
end up being platform dungeon assets. And whenever possible, open up the vectors. If you've got ones that are in AI format, that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this tile set um, vector. All I got to do is zoom in, figure out you know, what do I want to put in the game? What Which bricks? My selection tool, I can kind of grab just the stuff I want, object group, and then what I'll do is just kind of drag that to my board that I'm building. Now the great thing about vectors is obviously you can select them and see right here with this link you can constrain the proportions so you can just resize something up. So if I want my bricks to be really big, let's say 192, I'll just change that and next thing you know I got a huge brick. Awesome. So Illustrator's got a lot of different ways that you can duplicate things that you can size things side by side. Um, normally you hold down the alt key and you can duplicate stuff. To put things side by side you would uh, using select, select an object, select another object and then choose which one's the anchor. And then what you can do you should be able to go to your align stuff. Let's see if I can find that. Window, align, and here's my little align menu. And what I can do is I can align objects. I need the spacing. I need to show options. There we go. Distribute spacing. With the two things selected, if you select the anchor of the first one, the one you want side by side, you can just say horizontal distribute space like that. Awesome. And then you can use a regular vertical align bottom, which will put them side by side. So, um, you can do that a couple times and um, create yourself a nice row of bricks. Remember, you can always group things. You can just say object group and then to duplicate them you can say alt, create another one. And like I said before, hold down shift, hold down shift, click whichever object is the anchor, find your align menu, distribute horizontally, vertically align bottom, and you're well on your way to creating a nice row of bricks. Once I have one complete horizontal row, I can select it and then Alt and boom, got another row. I'm gonna select the bottom row, then the top row, and this time I'm gonna go to my distribute spacing and I'm gonna do the vertical. Oops, forgot to set my anchor. Gotta set my anchor down here somewhere. And now I should be able to do the vertical and I'll just align them horizontal left and there we go and if I want I can just go ahead object group those all together and then if I think I'm done with my bricks then I could lock that layer and create a new one and then whatever I do next will come on top now I think I'm gonna put a layer of objects like a door uh, maybe some barrels that type of thing just to spice things up a little bit so I'll come in here grab myself a door. I'm going to drag that in to what I'm working on. Once again, I can size things up. I can press what I think is shift and drag on the corners for proportional scale up. I can move that where I want. Let's say I want it here. Let's say I want the door to be pretty big. That'd be nice. Maybe I go grab some other items. Let's see here, there's some barrels over here. Yeah, maybe I grab a couple barrels. Drag that in. Once again, it's gonna start off being real small. I'm gonna shift drag on the corners. I can always object group these together. Let's kind of move things around a little bit. Keep it moving off the screen if I want. Okay. Um, so obviously there's more things I could put on there if I really wanted to, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna show you the complete blow by blow of everything. I just wanna get you the gist of what's possible. Let's create another layer. We're gonna call it player. And we're gonna go out and we're gonna grab 
the player. So I think that's Viking Warrior. And in this case, I don't have a vector. So I just have a high quality um, raster. And sometimes that's all you that's all you get. I could bring that in. Once again, it's on its own layer called player. And just kind of put them right there. Once again, I'm just kind of demonstrating things. If it was really my game, I would I would put a lot more work into everything. Um, so this looks pretty good so far. We're going to go ahead and lock that layer. Let's create another one. Let's call this one Logo. It's really important that the name of your game be prominent on the splash screen, that you have something that says who uh, made the game, which is you, and then you're going to need a place on your um, um, splash screen where you do credits. So one of the things you got to be careful of is that you're going to need whatever fonts you have installed. And this normally takes um, permissions that you know students may not have on computers, but we got to get that font installed. And then what you're able to do on your logo layer is there's a text uh, type tool over here. And all you have to do is come over and you can type anything you want, like the name of your game. Before you do that, you're going to want to really, really size up the font size so that you can see it. So for example, if mine was named Viking Quest, I could type that and then I can go and find that font that I installed. Sometimes it's difficult to find it, but if you look through here, you'll find it pretty easily. If you just look, and then you can always bump it up to whatever size you want. And so let's say that was the name of your game. You could put that right there. The next step is to fill with whatever color you want to fill with. And then you have the option of also stroking the text to put some color around the edges. Um, there is a menu over here for stroke and you can choose how much you want, what style. And this square right here is where you can click to um, specify the color. So once again, I'm just kind of messing around, showing you some of the things that are possible. You're going to want to do something that you really like. One of the things you can do is you can align things to the artboard. So if for some reason you want to center your text, you can do that. If you want to center it um, vertically, you can do that. Um, sometimes it's just as well to just put it where you want it. You're going to follow the same sort of steps to make sure that you have um, your name as the author of the game. And somewhere on here, you're going to have to have some credits. So obviously there's so much you can do. I just kind of played around with things a little bit. I put a student name here, I kind of styled the um, name of the game a little bit. And then down here, I put a little section for credits because we want to make sure that we attribute um, to the people who helped us um, with the assets, sounds, and things like that. And then um, I kind of like to leave these bare areas so that you can put instructions there, um, anything you want. So remember, you need credits. There has to be some instructions to the, to the um, player on how to um, go about starting to play the game. And this is a great place that you can do it. Um, obviously, you could use this area over here to tell a story, to have um, the instructions there. You could then take the logo and put it down here. It's all up to you. But the main thing is, is that have a high quality um, splash screen that has the name of your game, who made it, the credits, and some idea of how to get started. And it should have the look and feel of what someone is about to see when they play your game. So I'm going to go ahead and lock my last layer logo. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, use a clipping mask because I've got some things that are outside the um, layout. I know a lot of times when you guys are making things, you'll do that. We're outside the um, canvas or outside the artboard. You'll put a lot of stuff. And so um, I'm going to show you how you can clip that stuff out. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one more layer. And I'm going to call this mask. And on that layer, I'm going to create a rectangle. It's going to be 1920 by 1080. In this particular case, however, I want it to be transparent. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to arrange this 
you should be able to arrange this with the selection tool to be center, horizontally, and vertically. And then what you should be able to do is you really should be able to just select everything. Um, unlock all this stuff. There's our clipping mask. I'm going to select everything below it. We should be able to go to object, clipping mask, make. And what that's going to do is that's going to cut anything that's around the edges is give us that really nice professional look. Last but not least, we need to export our creation. Um, right now it's a vector. It needs to be a raster. So we're going to go to file and save for web. And what we should be able to do is we should be able to select PNG 24. Uh, we like that because it's got the transparency, very web friendly. And as you can see, I'm 1920 by 1080. If you needed to resize it, you could. That last step is just to save it. Illustrator. I'm going to call mine Viking Game 1920 by 1080 and save it. Okay. Okay, so when you're ready, you're just going to insert a new object type, a sprite, and that's going to be your splash screen or whatever you want to call it. Just want to show you how to put this in Construct 2. I'm going to go to the folder, my documents, so where I'm keeping my stuff, and I'm going to find my little sample illustrator folder that I've been working on. There it is, Viking Game. Close it. Awesome. Now using the different align tools in here, I should just be able to say layout, center horizontally, um, line layouts, center vertically, and there it is. Um, when I go to run my game, if that's my first layout, that's what people should see. The cool thing is, is that you should be able to add other things onto the screen. So you can have what you made in Illustrator and then you can still place things on top of it. Um, flashing text, um, other transparent GIFs and things like that. But this right here is going to give your game a professional look and feel. You can always put things on top of this like, you know, touch anything to begin or um, game over and the score. You can always put that on top of that. So design your splash screen, your end screen um, to facilitate whatever you're interested in doing. And remember, this was a 1920 1080 for like a landscape style game. If you're doing a portrait, you're going to want to do something, you know, what, 960 by 640 or something like that, where it's the center of the screen. But we want to have a high quality um, start and end screen that really um, sets the user up for success and makes them anticipate something great. Illustrator can be a very tough tool. I will be here to help you with it, of course. And um, But you can't be scared. you got to just dig just uh, roll up your sleeves, get in there, and ask for help if needed.